I spotted my soon-to-be ex-wife around the corner of the parking lot as she walked towards me for the first time since we broke up. When she noticed that I was waiting for her at the entrance to the cafe, I noticed a slight trembling in her gait. I gave her a disarming smile and said hello as she moved even closer. We met at the entrance and went inside. After a brief greeting, I directed her to an occupied table by the window, where a rather large and fit man of our age was sitting. April, this is my old friend, Sean. Sean, this is my April, my ex. They both said hello as I pulled April's chair over to face the window so she sat opposite Sean, giving me the view straight ahead. April, I haven't seen Sean here for several years. We previously played in tournaments together. We've kinda lost touch. And recently I had reason to reach out to him, as friends should because something happened that I believe requires his attention. Sean nodded, but other than the previous greeting, he remained silent. Thanks for coming, April, I continued. You mentioned several times that you wanted us to remain friends after you found the new love of your life. I have my doubts, but circumstances, including my meeting with Sean today, prompted me to try to see how this might work. I'm still incredibly angry about what happened but it is what it is, and if you can avoid talking about it or our past, we can see if there's anything here that could help continue the friendship. Carl, I'm sorry that everything turned out the way it did, but... April began, but I interrupted her with a gesture for her to stop. Please stop, April, I objected. We're not here to make memories, and talking about it won't make me any more open to friendship. I smiled, trying to lighten the situation. Besides, Sean probably doesn't want to be involved in that kind of discussion either. He already has enough worries. I did invite him to sit with us until his wife was ready for him to join her. So, April, how are you doing? April's initial frown turned to a smile at the question. She lost most of our mutual friends when she solemnly dumped me and moved in with her significant other. The situation is improving, the work is about the same, and we begin to settle into our apartment. She shuddered. After pausing to see if I would speak up, she continued. My parents and sister haven't warmed up at all, but they'll be glad to hear that you've contacted me and we're at least talking. I know my dad misses you. How are you doing? I miss him too. Please give them my best wishes. I don't feel like it's appropriate to address them at all, but maybe time will change that. Then I continued. I'm doing more or less well although I'm a little unsettled in most aspects of my life, so I'm trying to get back to doing other things. For example, the other day, I accidentally crossed paths with Sean's wife, after which I contacted Sean. Maybe now we are just acquaintances, but once upon a time, we were friends. You know me, I appreciate a good, honest friend who you can rely on. As I said this, I hope that a smirk did not appear on my face. Suddenly, Sean spoke. Yes, although a few years ago we kind of lost touch with Carl, and I'm sorry for that, but this often happens as we dissolve into our families. I've had so many fake friends over the years that it's nice to know there are people who care enough about you to do the right thing. And April, I think I can be that kind of friend to you, I said, pointing out the window. Across the street, Sean's wife and the new love of his life, April, were kissing as they entered the boutique hotel. Sean had already jumped out of his seat and rushed to the door, running across the street. I don't think Sean and soulmate, the love of April's life, can ever be friends. April gasped and looked back at me. I stood up, frowning, and sighed as I was about to leave. Perhaps this will be the last thing I do for you as a friend. I didn't like it at all. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.